It's a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Jackson Waring, who is the starting quarterback for the Grandview Vikings. And Jackson, normally we talk a lot about sports here, and we mention a few other things along the way. Tonight I'd like to switch things up just a little bit and, and uh, maybe just talk a little bit about sports and, and talk about some other things, as I know that you've had some changes in your life within the past 12 months, maybe a little bit more, but specifically in, in 2024, I want to talk a little bit about last season of football and, and kind of bring us up to speed just a little bit. Last year, you played for Grandview. Uh, you have had a fantastic football career, high school and at college as well. Threw for nearly 3,000 yards. I mean, 36 touchdown passes, just seven interceptions. That's better than a five-to-one ratio there. You ran in five more touchdowns as well. So you were responsible for 41 touchdowns last season for Grandview. By the way, they had a pretty good season as well. <laughs> Another undefeated season through the regular through the uh, the regular season portion of the schedule and, and made it to the playoffs again. Talk a little bit about playing for Grandview there in Des Moines. Yeah, absolutely. You know, first of all, I just want to, you know, thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, he's the reason why all that happened uh, this year. You know, I didn't, uh, the year before that, before I got to Grandview, I, I wasn't playing quarterback. And so thankfully, Coach Woodley and the rest of the coaching staff gave me the opportunity to come and play for Grandview. You know, I just, I love the standards at which they played and the kind of culture they had in their program. Uh, and I just thought I could be a, a, an important piece um, on their team. And they gave me the opportunity to do so. And uh, we, we did a lot of hard, diligent work uh, throughout the spring season, getting me up to speed with the offense and getting in there uh, with meetings with Coach Fulton and you know just learning about each other and building that camaraderie. And then as well as just building, you know, that, those relationships with the teammates as well. Uh, Cause that's just important. You know, it's not all about scoring touchdowns and, uh, you know, trying to rank up as many stats as possible. But, you know, a lot of success comes from the relationships you build with the men on your team. And uh, throughout last year and, you know, coming into this fall, you know, we're we are a lot stronger uh, emotionally and mentally with each other uh, than we were when I first got here. You know, that's what we've been looking for. And that was a big emphasis last year. And I think just throughout the season, um, I continued to improve. I continued to, you know, just relax a little bit more. Uh, and just little little uh, stories from before I came to Grandview, I was playing wide receiver and tight end and running back and, you know, all the positions that where you weren't throwing a football, <laughs> I was playing. I was on punt team. I was doing some kickoff drills. Like I was just trying to find any way to get on the field. And I was, I was having a blast with it. I was loving it. Um, and then, you know, I hit the transfer portal and me and Coach Woodley are talking. I'm talking with Coach Fulton and Coach Knock and, well, I'm going to play quarterback. So now I got to get my my head back in the game with the quarterback because it's a lot different than uh, running routes and um, hitting people. So, again, big spring ball. And I think uh, with all that hard work, you know, and trusting the process and trusting the men beside me and trusting the what Coach Fulton and what Coach Woodley had for me, um, th those were those – that is where those numbers came from. Um, and just also just, I mean, we had outstanding guys around me as well. You know, I didn't really have to, you know, make big plays all the time. Like I had Demon Street, I had Seth Jewell, Nick Danielson, Avery Gates, you know, all those guys, Jordan Cumb, Isaiah Toki. Like we were, we had outlets to go and it made my job a little bit easier. And the lineup front did a phenomenal job, you know, and I think we're returning all of them this year, which is even better uh, for chemistry up front, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, but, yeah, no, that's the – as of right now, that first season is a culmination of hard work, and we're, we're looking to build off that and head into the, here in the fall camp here soon. You know, returning not only you but all those players that you mentioned and, and talking about that, that doesn't bode well for Grandview's opponents this year. Uh, that, that much is certain. I had a chance to visit with Coach Woodley a little bit earlier, and, and uh, you know I try to prepare for these preview videos and, and learn what I can, and I realize it's, it's you know all about the coach and the players too. But in, in uh, studying you and finding things online, I, I saw that you had been baptized this past spring, and, and there was a video online about that, caught my attention, uh, watched that, really appreciated that, and and I'd love to hear your take on all of that. I know you had the opportunity even to get to speak prior to being baptized. So tell us a little bit about that part of your journey. Yeah. Um, so like you said, that video uh, that you watched, 
to my baptism on uh, the part where I spoke, I was just sharing my testimony, you know, I'll share a little bit here and, you know, talk about what my faith means to me now and, you know, how I got here and, and now what football looks like uh, with that. And so, you know, prior, prior to my coming to Christ, I, uh, you know, I was just your high school athlete, you know, beyond blessed with the gifts and talents that I had. Um, I was taking advantage of them, you know, going to going to camps, doing this, you know, doing some things uh, that, you know, regular high school students do. But at the same time, you know, I was also taking them for granted because, you know, I thought I had everything figured out. And when you're at that age, <laughs> you know, it it happens to the best of us. And, uh, you know, there were some other things at play, um, but, you know, throughout the course of getting to Illinois State, getting to my fret, my, my true freshman year as the second string quarterback, you know, I was on top. I was on top. You know, I was ready to go. I was ready to get in the game and, you know, make a difference. And then I got my opportunity uh, the season of 2022. Um, I played in five games. Had did did a great job running the offense. Um, did, did a lot of good stuff. Had a couple of mistakes here and there. I mean, that's part of the game. Uh, but I think what really made me hit rock bottom um, was when I got put to the fourth. It was, it was fourth or fifth string. I mean, they're both the same spot. You're not playing. Uh, so um, that happened after the 2022 season. I ended up getting surgery on my left shoulder and um never got to see uh the ball again and gun uh but otherwise that is when i started playing other positions but you know it was just that realization of like some of the things i was doing outside of football um you know were benefiting me um some of the relationships i had were not beneficial at all um the way the way i respected myself you know the way i talked treated others um it wasn't emulating christ uh, whatsoever, but I know I, I knew who Christ was. Um, I, I went to Des Moines Christian uh, for my four years in high school, um, but I think it just went went in one ear and out the other. And unfortunately, you know that happens to a lot of kids that go through that um, kind of curriculum. And I think just based off my testimony alone, like yeah, I, the the Lord can use that and be like, okay, you know, you you want to go try and figure things out on your own. I'll be right here waiting for you, but you have a good time doing that. And when you're ready, when you're ready, I'll be right here and you can come back whenever. And so that time was for me, um, the winter of, I think it was 2023. Yeah. Because it was about, we're coming up on three years now, two and a half, three years now, um, or in 2022, I apologize that I gave my life to Christ. And I was reading a book called, um, how to make your bed. And it sounds pretty simple. It's just a little book on discipline. Uh, but the guy who was writing it was using Bible verses with uh, discipline mm -hmm. in it. And uh, now I was just laying there in my bed and I was like, <laughs> I didn't have nothing going for me. I, you know, I didn't really want to do anything. It was kind of isolate myself. Um, and then just reading this book, I was kind of putting some pieces together, you know, on what I needed to do to, get back to where I was and this and that. And then, you know, at the same time, like I didn't have an anchor, like I didn't have a foundation. And I was thinking about that and I was like, you know, Hey, <laughs> I know who, I know who Jesus Christ is. Um, but am I going to take him seriously? So a lot of thought and uh, prayer and just sitting there reading. Um, I accepted Christ as my Lord and savior, um, devoted my life to him, surrendered at the cross I uh, just gave everything to him. You know, it used to be for the applause of man, you know, looking to seek to appease him or appease man um, and and just trying trying to have that, you know, notoriety and uh, everything about scholarship, this scholarship, that, you know, stats, this, stats, that. And now, now to me, like all I really care about is giving the best effort for my men out there on the field, What you know, whether we win or lose um, and just having a humble mindset and walking in all humility you know trying to show honor and praise to god the father and jesus christ uh, and everything i do and don't get me wrong it's it's tough sometimes you know but you got to bite the bullet and uh keep pushing forward and just find joy in everything uh because there, there certainly is and there's a lot of growing pains too but um so yeah i gave my life to christ and throughout the throughout the year when i was in the portal 
and just finishing up my last semester there in Illinois State, uh, it became like a mo uh, a time of like isolation, and it wasn't like a bad isolation. It was a good isolation. I was just growing as a man of the Lord, and um, you know, figuring out what it means to be a leader uh, of men, but that reflects that reflects God. And so I think throughout that time um, that I was, you know, building that relationship with the Lord and getting into his word and letting him speak to me. Uh, he was doing that in me, but he was also making things work uh, to get me to Grandview. And so fast forward to our 2023 uh, or our 2024 season um, started me off slow, getting me in there, building relationships with the guys around me, getting to know the coaches. Uh, we have a great season. And now this year, you know, it's a totally different story. You know, um, the Lord has blessed me with a great group of men uh, that I get to lead every day. And there's plenty of great other, plenty of great men in this group as well that are leaders too. And I'm looking for guys to step up and, you know, make that decision because, you know, one guy ain't going to change it all. Um, and it's got to be a group effort. It's got to be a, a, a culmination of, of, of all our mindsets put on one thing. And, and we, we know what our, what our goals are and we all got to buy into that. And part of that, is also just, you know, knowing our identity and understanding that football is just a game, but it's also um, a game for a guy like myself and plenty of guys on the Greenville football team to witness to not other, not just men on our team, but to other men on the field as well. Um, and so that is, I'll say that's, that's the gist of um, my testimony and, you know, how I got here and just how the Lord has saved my saved my life and changed my heart, you know, it's changed my desires. And I, I couldn't be any more grateful for that. And I just, I want to continue to not only have opportunities like this, and I'm extremely grateful for you extending this invite uh, to me uh, to talk about this. And I'm extremely appreciative of it. Uh, but I hope the listeners are really taking this stuff to heart because, you know, this stuff is real life, you know, regardless if you want to you know, believe in it or not, you know, you're, you're playing on one side or the other. Uh, you're either an enmity with God or you're, you're a friend of God, an adopted son. And so, um, well, I, listen, I, I appreciate all that. And I, and I'm glad that you, you said it like that. And I, I had a couple of questions that I, I wanted to ask in regard to, to what you were saying right there. And the first one is, you know, you, you were mentioning, you, you came back and you just, you know, you, you read and you thought and you, you know, you prayed and, and you spent some time by yourself. This was a decision that, that, you know, we do hear about things in church. We do hear the gospel in church. We, you know, you preach to taught in church, but there, there comes a time of reflection too, where, you know, it's just you and God. And it sounds like that, that you had time and, and was it something that was, you know, you feel like it was all at once or, or that, uh, you know, it, it took a little while for really for what God was trying to show you to sink in. Yeah. Um, I, some things were quick, you know, right off the bat. Um, and some of that was just, you know, some disciplined things. Um, and then other things, and, you know, I'm still working on things today, but uh, he's helped me tremendously throughout, throughout the whole journey of, you know, knowing, knowing to hate what he hates and love what he loves. And, you know, to continue to have that mindset of, Jesus at the forefront of everything that I do so that when I'm making decisions and, and seeking out the correct answer, you know, go into prayer and ask for his wisdom and his discernment in order to help me make that decision. And I think that's really helped keep me out of a lot of things, but it's also helped me get through a lot of things as well. Um, you know, it's not a difficult task. You know, the flesh is always fighting against the spirit. You know, Paul talks about how, you know, those two things are always at battle. So we can never carry out, you know, good all the time because we have two conflicting things going on. But, you know, there's all the Lord is faithful and he'll always give us an outlet. So you stand firm. Um, you keep persevering even through persecution and slander. You know, it's you, he'll deliver us, man. And uh, that's that's what he's done for me. And that's what he'll continue to do for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, all around the world. One, the other thing too is, is, 
you know, and I, I remember in the video I watched, you actually, you, the phrase that you used that you had football as an idol and that that doesn't need to be that in that place in your life. Now, from a, a practical perspective, where we are right now in our lives and where you are in particular, you know, you have gifts and talents to be able to play football well. And those are God-given gifts and talents to be able to, to do what you do and do it well. I, talk a little bit about, you know, juxtaposing that with walking out your faith and not having football as an idol. And yet, you know, you, you've, if you don't give your best, you're letting down your team. If you don't give your best, you, you may be putting yourself in a position to get injured <laughs> because mm -hmm. you have to be yeah. in good shape to play this game. Uh, talk about that and, and finding that balance in there that you want to give your best to this, but you know ultimately that you know our, our everything comes from Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just like with my testimony, uh, everything I was doing beforehand was um, – for myself, you know, it was a selfish mindset. It was, you know, what I can do to get myself in the best position, you know, stats, um, scholarship offers, you know, whatever it was, interviews, this and that, uh, you know, just trying to get my name out there to get some, get some more publicity so I could try and get opportunities elsewhere. Um, but ultimately that failed me. And then, so to go into the next question of, how do I use football now? Well, it's just like um, what I said earlier, and I got it from Tony Dungy's book um, called Quiet Strength that I'm reading right now. And it's just, uh, you know, football's a game. You know, he, he obviously was a, he was a, he was a good player and a phenomenal coach. And uh, his deal is, you know, football is just a game. And as a believer in Christ, we can use football as an outlet to, minister and witness to the men and women around us. Uh, and, and that can be through our play. That can be through our work ethic. That could be through our words. That could be through, you know, how we conduct ourselves on the field, you know, because all of it, people are watching, you know, whether you, whether you like it or not. And especially now, you know, the spotlight is, is, is not, it's going to be a little harder, a little, maybe a little harsher, you know, people are going to be a little more, uh, the, the scrutiny, We'll probably go up just a tad. So uh, actions and temper, you got to be controlled a little bit. But, you know, even without all this, believers in Christ, you know, we have to emulate Christ as he walked. And that's showing patience and, and showing kindness and compassion. And those are all, you know, fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, with discipline and with and with reading the word and understanding that, you know, our work is not in vain. Ecclesiastes, you know, we're not. We're not doing all this stuff for no reason. Like we're all giving glory to God and we're going out and we're doing our work, but we're also showing others, you know, why we do our work and so that they can also give glory to God and come to realize that, Hey, you know, life ain't meaningless. And the things that we do, they can all be, they can all be outlets in order to reach, you know, a bigger, a bigger group uh, of people. And that's how I see football. So every time I hit the field, you know, I'm loose, I'm ready to go. And I'm just like, Lord, let's get after it, man. Let's let's be a warrior for Christ today, and uh, just give a hundred percent all the time because He gave me, like you said, the ability to do so with with good uh, gifts and talents. And so, you know, just to reiterate um, some things that you were saying was like, you know, if I'm not giving my all, no, I'm not giving my men my all, I'm not giving myself my all. Most certainly, I'm not giving back to the Lord who who has gifted me with this. So, I'm selling three things in one short. Uh, and, and to me, you know, that's that's lazy and I don't like that at all. And so on the flip side of that, I also know that, you know, through this, through some of the pain, through some of the suffering, there's triumph and joy all the time because I got my brothers around me and we're all doing the same thing. <laughs> and so it's it's uh, it's kind of like. I think it's Ecclesiastes 410 about the uh, three stranded cord mm -hmm. and for Ecclesiastes 412 is uh, about the man who doesn't have a brother to help him up. Um, but the man who does, uh, he's very blessed. And I make sure to tell them, tell our, tell my men that all the time, <laughs> like, Hey guys, we got, we got 80 guys all around us. You know, if one of us falls, we all fall. And if one of us triumphs, we all triumph. You know, we're, we're a team effort here. There's no eyes. And, uh, that's, that's one of the many messages, uh, that we're, we're putting out on the team and just trying to, 
get guys to buy in and not only know Christ, but to also give their all for him out on that field. I appreciate that so much because you're, I think you're exactly right. And you're right on it. The, the whatever it is, the gifts and talents that we have, then it's, it's an honor to get to do them well, because that actually that, you know, that glorifies God when, when we're doing well with the gifts and talents that he's given us. And, and so I appreciate your take on that. And, you know, I hear over and again, the word discipline in what you're talking about. And it, and it is that it's, it's a discipline to walk out the life and to live the life. Well, uh, Jackson, I, I would love to visit with you for another hour. I don't want to keep you that long today, but I just in, in close this, well, cause I, I, I want you to come back on the channel too. So uh, okay. I, in, in, Wrapping up the time today, and, and if, if someone's watching this and it's the, you know, the, the time that they get to hear you talk and, and uh, maybe just, you know, how do you, how do you sum up your testimony and what would you say to, you know, teammates or, or you know, classmates, if you will, in, in the university with you or just even just folks around your age? How would you share what you would want it to share? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first, I just start off with. Uh, Paul in Philippians, you know, he talked about he's the worst of the worst. You know, he persecuted Christians. Uh, he was jealous of them. And he also had um, every right to believe that he he had righteousness, you know, because he was a Jew. Um, and he, he had everything uh, that needed to be a part of that um, family and whatnot. Uh, and then came to realize, you know, pretty quick, that Jesus is the only way for uh, righteousness and holiness. And Jesus was like, told Paul, Hey, you're going to understand what it means to serve me. <laughs> go do, go do, uh, go do the father's will. And there goes Paul. And so just to go off of that, um, you know, we're all, we're all men and women. Uh, we all have flaws. We, we sin daily. Like there's, there's no one who is perfect. Uh, but you know what? There is someone who was, and is he is still alive to this day um, after the resurrection. And he, he died for everybody's sins. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what what race, you know, what ethnicity, culture, background you come from. He died for everyone on the earth. And I think there's a verse in Acts that talks about um, how God, through Adam, created all ethnicities and nationalities and generations to serve him. You know, we're all we're all one race here. We're all here to serve serve one father and one living God. And that's Yahweh. And, uh, so with that being said, um, don't ever, don't think you have to, you know, make yourself feel like you have, feel like you have to fix yourself. Um, you know, before you come to the cross and try and get things figured out because that's exactly the opposite. Jesus will meet you right where you're at and, uh, he'll get started with you whenever you make that decision. You know, he's yearning for us to come and, uh, Whoever's listening to this and whoever you know, if watches the recording out there, you know, think about it, pray about it, get in the Bible, you know, read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and uh, make that decision for yourself. And because, uh, I mean, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Uh, but all you need is a mustard seed of faith and Jesus will do the rest. So don't think you got to make yourself perfect or whatnot, because none of us are. But he is. And he's the one who makes that bridge. Uh to the father and i'll leave you with this verse and it's john 16 4 um, it's, jesus is the way the truth and the light and the only way to get to the father is through him i appreciate that <clears throat> and i would give my amen to that too so so let that be and and uh, so be it i appreciate it jackson jackson wearing with us here on the summit today on midwest sports net uh, quarterback starting quarterback for the grandview vikings in 22 23 or excuse me 23 24 heading into the 24-25 season. Jackson, I, I told your coach we're going to follow the Vikings this season. I will say the same thing to you right now, but uh, I appreciate I'll be uh, watching your numbers as a brother in Christ as well and, and uh, just wanting the success for you on the field because I know that you're glorifying God with the gifts and talents that he has given you. And I'm really appreciative that you took some time with us today here on the Summit, and I hope you'll come back and, and share more again, not only about sports, but about uh, your life and what you're doing to further the kingdom of God through Jesus. So thank you, sir, for being with us today. Amen. Thank you, Joey, for having me. I greatly appreciate it.